Welcome back to Daily Stand Up. Today's episode, admittedly, is not going to be as glamorous of an episode in terms of actually showing the project demo or anything like that. So the first thing I want to show is basically the current state of my Rust project. Um, <clears throat> and hopefully, actually, maybe one of you all will know kind of the problem I'm running into, and you'll see in a second. So let me, uh, my Rust project is running. And I'm going to go ahead and um, restart my front end. And if you remember from last time, I set that loop up to when it hits the index, it'll it'll send off uh, some messages up to my queue, and I dial that back to five as opposed to uh, one million. So it would actually uh, publish at an appropriate time. And I added a new field on my engine model for um, engine temperature. Uh, and I just set to, for right now, just an arbitrary value of 600. And I'm publishing that up to my um, RabbitMQ queue. But the interesting thing is, so you can see that it publishes fine. Um, it gets processed and everything in this Rust microservice. <coughs> However, the new line I added was for deserializing the data. Um, and again, I'm coming from a C-sharp world, mainly where... Serializing and deserializing JSON is pretty simple, just with either uh, Newtonsoft or uh, .NET's built-in package to do that, where you just provide a type, and it, it does it pretty good. It's it's very consistent. So that's the you know the, the the frame of mind I'm operating in when I'm looking at things like this. So I assume that this will be kind of similar. And I, I gotta be honest, I got kind of stuck with Rust in terms of how to deserialize and serialize. Uh, data when I'm dealing with optional types and that's the problem I'm encountering right now so if we go to my engine model uh, most of these are optional uh, or sorry nullable right so strings ints and then goods so I converted that more or less to um, what I think it will be in rust and this is what I got and if you see here, I'm going to go up to the top where I just started to process the five messages that were posted to the queue. Um, I'm going to go ahead and copy all that stuff and copy it. And then I'm going to go over to here, uh, delete the old one, and then paste it in here. Okay, it looks like there was some carryover from maybe the last time. Um, but you can see that the receive message from the queue has all the data, but the deserialized message has none for each of the fields so something is messing up with the serialization or the deserialization um, and I can't figure out what so my code basically is this is the provided struct with all the same values and again I have to mark them as optional I think because these are nullable I guess the first two aren't but I was running into an, uh, a problem and I had to make them optional so maybe that's really the issue is something is actually incorrect with the, my deserialization logic as opposed to the actual um, the type I'm not sure so here's what I'm using I'm using these dependencies uh, I, again I'm super new to this uh, using CRD, CRD, uh JSON and then UUID um, that's just kinda what I saw online to do and then my logic here um, I have this deserialize function to basically take in a type and then basically just run this, right? And then call unwrap, which I don't know if, again, I, it's like I, I keep reading to not use unwrap, but I don't know how to not use it unless I'm like, I see that you can use it like in a, uh, basically like a switch with okay and error. Um, I'll probably refactor to that once I kind of get it working but that's my that's my function um, and I can't figure out why this none of the data is coming through because I know I have data right from the decode a message from RabbitMQ and I pass it into that as bytes but I'm not getting any Data back so that's kind of where I'm at um, so where that fits into 
my project is, we are right here, so wire up notification handling. The, basically the gist of this is going to be, uh, once I get this part, uh, where are we at? Once I get this part here, like stable, like I can serialize, or sorry, I can deserialize the data from RabbitMQ into this type, then I would like to check, you know, so if, uh, if the temperature is over uh, like 500, um, I'm actually going to uh, post a message to a new queue that I haven't made yet to send a message uh, for like, you know, the engine has exceeded this temperature, like issue, issue a warning or something like that. So that's kind of where this fits into uh, the broader scope of the project. But again, that's kind of the issue that I'm encountering. I did have a lot of time to work on it. It's already kind of late as it is. It's almost like 10.30, but I want to get this video in and uh, in preparation for uh, tomorrow. And I'll, I'll probably, when I have time this week, I'll probably continue to work on this again. It's just, it's just kind of like a when I have time thing uh, after work and everything else. So, um, but yeah, so if anyone has any ideas, I'm currently going through a Rust book right now. Um, but it's, yeah, it's just like small stuff like this that's just, the learning curve is rather steep, at least for me, just because coming from um, more of a, a C sharp world. Um, so again, this the syntax is not as clear to me for this, but yeah, if anyone's um, had experience with serialization or deserialization, um, like libraries or dependencies to use in Rust, uh, that'd be super helpful. Um, I'm just kind of like piecing together stuff I'm finding online, um, and also ChatGPT just to generate some of the code for me and kind of get me um, uh, progressing and moving along in this project. So <coughs> that's kind of where I'm at. Um, but last video uh, was, I think, the introduction to this. I'm pretty sure I showed most of the, um, the project running. I don't think I changed uh, anything else. Um, the next thing, once I once I do get this part running, um, will be to store it, put, store this message if it does exceed that temperature threshold in some kind of uh, in some kind of array, and then uh, at some point I have to send. Well, I might actually I might be able to post a message. Um, immediately upon receiving it if, if it does exceed that and then publish it up to a new um, queue that may be possible that might be a better route to do in terms of well it might be how I, <coughs> how I was thinking about this was like um, I guess my, my first thought was that I don't want to send every message that exceeds that temperature threshold up to the notifications queue i like to kind of like group them together so like if we have like uh like 10 or so messages that exceed that then it'll send a message that way the i'm not like spamming that notifications queue with like a million messages <coughs> excuse me um I might do that. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'll have to play around with it. I think I might just focus right now just on establishing the, the connection to the new queue um, and make sure that I can actually post up a, a message from here um, given the logic. But I don't know. I don't know. This should be interesting. Um, but yeah, it's coming together uh, slowly but surely. So anyway, that is it. Um, I'll, pro I'll probably make a post or something. Um, like just like a community post of some references and resources and books and things I've been looking at recently. I feel like I feel like I've gone through a lot, but I haven't had time to like kind of process and, and, and synthesize everything that I've been reading and everything. Um, I might do that later. I might work on a community post on my YouTube uh, channel just to kind of see uh, write more or less right right up where I'm at. So. Um, but yeah, anyway, thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.